If it isn't my favorite YouTuber, Cyberflow, let's see the fun way to learn hacking right now. Yeah, you get the point. Hacking can be incredibly fun and lucrative if you do it the right way. But most people end up quitting after two weeks because they start off like this. Download Kali Linux, watch a four-hour NMAP tutorial, try to hack Facebook, fail miserably, give up. So let me teach you the fun way to learn hacking. If you want to do this properly, you need to follow three very important rules. First, experiment with every tool and understand what you're actually running, not just copying commands. Second, make your own small projects that you actually enjoy working on. And third, make sure the way you're doing it is the best way before moving forward. Let's say you're watching a hacking tutorial and the guy tells you, I'm not gonna lie to you, fourth should be use AI to your best advantage. There was a video I made on uh, like a pen tester tool. Um, I forgot what the name of it was, but it's definitely on my channel. If it's not gonna be, it will be linked up in the, in the video for sure. But it's like a pen testing tool where all you need to do is have the Claude API connected to it. And then you can run vulnerability tests, like use AI to your advantage while learning. Don't use it as a crutch because you won't learn like that, but it's definitely a tool to use. Do that Nmap scans networks and finds open ports. In the example, he types nmap-ss192.168.1.1 and shows you a list of open ports. But then the YouTuber moves on you might not really understand what the tool does if you stop there. So you need to experiment. First, I take the nmap command and I try it on my own router. I can see port 80 is open, which means there's a web server running. But what happens if I scan my own computer instead? I run nmap localhost and now I see completely different ports. This is starting to make sense. Nmap is literally just checking which doors are unlocked on a computer. But then I wonder, what does the dash SS flag actually do? So I try the scan without it. Now it takes way longer. I look it up and find out dash SS is a stealth scan that doesn't complete the TCP handshake. This changes everything, because now I understand why I use that flag, not just that I'm supposed to use it. Now I want to personalize it and make a small project out of it. Throughout bug bounty hunting, you need to run the same nmap commands over and over on different targets. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's say I'm hunting on multiple bug bounty programs and I need to scan all their subdomains. First, I gather subdomains with tools like subfinder. Now, instead of manually running nmap on each subdomain like an idiot, I can write a simple Python script that reads my subdomain list and runs nmap on each one automatically. I tell ChatGPT to write me a script that takes a file with subdomains, runs nmap-ss-p-n on each one, and saves the results. Now I have an automated recon tool that I can run while I sleep. But here's where it gets even better. I can modify my script to only show me hosts with port 80 or 443 open, or automatically screenshot every web server it finds using iWitness. This is way more fun than following tutorials. And you're learning Python and bash scripting and reconnaissance methodology all at once. And now the last step is making sure you do it properly. Throughout this video, I've been doing reconnaissance wrong because this is usually how beginners learn it. The way you're actually supposed to do it is by following a methodology. First, passive reconnaissance with DNS enumeration, then active scanning with nmap, then service enumeration, then exploitation. How do you know how to do it properly? Well, honestly, just study what professional pen testers do. Go read bug bounty reports on Hacker One and see how hunters found critical vulnerabilities. They systematically enumerate yeah, so like similar to what I was saying, this uh, the tool I'm talking about, uh, Kira or something. I, I it's on my channel. Uh, a lady, a good YouTuber was reviewing it, and it does the exact same thing. It gives you a pen test documentation after it runs all the commands and stuff, and it shows you in the terminal what commands it's running. So you can either look at it, and then it auto generates like a whole documentation while you're learning this. It's pretty informative, if you ask me if you're gonna go about this the fun way, you know? The entire attack service, then focus on the most promising targets. Now, let me give you a better example. Let's take Burp Suite. 
Burp Suite is basically a proxy that sits between your browser and web servers, so you can intercept and modify HTTP requests. Let's say I'm playing a web-based game, and I notice that when I collect coins, the URL looks like game.com slash collect question mark amount equals 10. What if I change that 10 to 10,000? I open Burp Suite, intercept the request, and modify the amount parameter. I just learned how to find and exploit IDOR bugs by hacking my own game progress. Okay, so now it's time to pick a field to specialize in. Web application hacking is probably going to need Burp Suite, SQL Map, deep understanding of HTTP protocols. Meanwhile, network penetration testing focuses on Nmap, Metasploit, privilege escalation techniques. These are completely different skill sets. Regardless of how complex the target is, you should still attempt it if it's something you want to hack. Don't just use a tool because you're comfortable with it when there are much better alternatives. And when it comes to AI, once you already learned basic syntax, don't overuse it for problem solving, or you're going to become a useless hacker who can't troubleshoot without ChatGPT. When it comes to projects, get creative and do stuff for things you actually use or enjoy. You could write scripts to automate your recon workflow. You could build a custom tool that doesn't exist yet, like a subdomain monitor. You could build a password manager that uses encryption you implemented yourself. What I'm trying to tell you is you have so many options and all you have to do is get creative and not be scared to just hop in and try to build it. From now on, it just comes down to you putting in the work and trying to have fun. In the beginning, it's quite important that you have fun or you're going to get bored and quit very early. And other than that, see you in the next one. If yeah, it ha you like the way I break this stuff down and you actually want to learn hacking the right way, then check out Cyberflow's Academy. Yeah, sometimes I like to I like to watch to see if the ad is going to come. If it's not, I didn't want to cut it out too early. But yeah, make sure you guys have fun when it comes to hacking and learning how to hack. For me personally, I looked at bug bounty hunting and I wanted to make money first. But now I'm dipping into like the fun parts of hacking, which I can't really talk about on the internet because certain things you just aren't supposed to like let the people know that you can or can't do as opposed to a risk and everything should be for educational content. Like, it's not like I know anything anyway. Like, little old me. But nonetheless, you guys should learn hacking and do what you guys want to do. Like if you guys want to, I can't say that, but if you know what I mean, like if you guys want to do it, go on and do it. If you guys want to learn how to understand the TCP and networking and stuff, you guys can do it. And ultimately, I would show you things on my end, but then that opens me up to getting hacked. And the first step of learning how to hack is don't be stupid. You know what I mean? You can easily have the script changed on you. Like, don't think that you're the best hacker in the world. You're not. Someone can easily figure you out, though. So subscribe to the Cyberflow. He does a great job at breaking down um, hacking and different ways you can make money hacking in a very comedic way. And I hope you guys like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.